Continue our rookie draft profile series today with Stanford wide receiver Michael Wilson, what he could possibly bring to the table for the Arizona Cardinals. Thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of the All Cardinals Podcast. My name is Donnie Druin, joined every week by my co-host Richie Bradshaw. Go to follow our work at Donnie Druin on Twitter, at Richie Brads36 on Twitter, allcardinals.com or si.com slash NFL slash Cardinals, however you want to do it. We will be there 24-7 to give you all the latest and greatest news analysis updates and more about cardinals.com richie today like i already alluded to michael wilson stanford receiver wrapping up our day two um you know we've already done three draft profiles so far paris johnson bj ojalari garrett williams very very excited to dive into michael wilson but first before we get into it how are you i'm good donnie it's a, a beautiful may 31st on the day we're recording this which is the last day of may in case anyone was curious um it's not the 30th, like some people would like to make fun of me for, but you know, it's 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 May 31st. It's a beautiful May 31st, and I'm always here and happy to talk sports with you, my friend. But you know, the 31st is the last day, not the 30th. Yeah, you know, sometimes the the whole like leap year thing likes to throw people off. I was never one of those people that can just like automatically think, oh, like this month has like X amount of days, and I've never been you gotta do the knuckle thing, the January, February, March, April. <laughs> It works. <laughs> I've I vaguely know what you're talking about, but I'm not even remotely smart enough to count on my knuckles. But anyway, <laughs> I dropped out of the community college. Talking about Micah Wilson, Stanford receiver. Um, he brings a lot to the table, man. And you wrote in the draft profile, which should be published Friday, uh, whenever this drops. Five-year player at a Power Five school, highly recruited at a high school. Suffered a season-ending injury in 2020 and 2022 that limited him to 14 games in the last three years. His size profile is 6'2", 213, 213. And athleticism is exactly what pro teams look for. When you watched Michael Wilson, tell me what jumped off the page for you, good or bad? I think the biggest thing that jumps off when you're looking at Michael Wilson is just the raw intangibles that he has. He does have that build that teams are looking for of a of a prototypical number one wide receiver at 6'2", 213. He's got adequate speed. He's not a burner. He's got a four, five, eight speed. So I know some people are going to be turned off by that, but we also need to realize not everyone is Tyree Hill. He's got adequate speed. He plays faster than he than he he actually looks running on a track field. Uh, he catches the ball very well. I think he's got a lot of goods in the making to become a very good route runner. The problem, Donnie, is when you play 14 games in three seasons because of various injuries, it's going to stunt your growth. And that's where we have run into with Michael Wilson is right now, it's just been difficult for him to get onto the football field over the last three years. In the end of the 2020 season, he had a foot injury that bled into the start of the 2021 season, and he only played the final four games of that year. And then this past season, I couldn't find it anywhere uh, it was an undisclosed injury. I did some digging and could not find what it was, whatever it he, was though. I think he told us after we talked to him at the draft, I don't remember what it is, but they, they did a very good going. job of keeping that on, on the DL. And as, as you and I both know very, very well covering the sun devils teams don't have to disclose injuries. So, nope. you know, there, there's no like regulating whether or not a school actually has to come forward and say what it is. Exactly. And because he hasn't been on the field, he turns into a raw prospect. And that's one of the reasons why he dropped to the end of the third round was because this is a guy who is a project. He's a guy who's going to need some refining in his craft in order to become a actual valuable contributor on offense. I do think this is a day one contributor on special teams, though. He's got an attitude that he plays with this passion of like, I want to do the nitty gritty stuff. Well, like he's a willing blocker. That's going to look really good for the run game and whatnot. But it also tells me that this is a guy who could turn into a very, very good gunner on special teams. And if there's one thing the Cardinals pride themselves off of, it's having quality special teams players. I mean, over the last decade, you had Buda Baker got his start as a special teamer. You had, Oh my God. He was a corner. Donnie it was a third round pick or something like that. It was a corner played at a small school it was one of the best special teamers of the last decade. Uh, Deion Buchanan. No, 
no, but Buchanan also was a special teamer. Oh, that's going to kill me. And it's going to really piss me off when I figure out who it is. But when, when I do eventually remember, you'll know. But the Cardinals have had a lot of good special teams players over the last decade plus, And Michael Wilson could just be the next in line to be a very good special teams player for them. They obviously want more out of him. But right now, I think that's we, we got to take baby steps here. And we can't expect Michael Wilson to be a thousand yard receiver as a rookie when he hasn't even played uh, a full season in three years. So we just got to take steps here. There is a lot to like here, though. Just realize he was a third round pick because his growth has been stunted by injuries. And there's a lot of work to be done to get him ready for that next level. Yeah, I think that was probably the biggest knock on him is he was a raw prospect too. Justin Bethel. Justin Bethel. Literally. That's a name. That's a name. Yes. There's a lot of really good things to like about Michael Wilson whenever you do watch him. I feel like my biggest takeaway after just going through his profile, he does a lot of things good, but nothing that really kind of made him jump off the page, which, which is not a bad thing. If you're getting receiver into third round, not necessarily a bad thing that he doesn't stick out from like the rest of the crowd. Um, I can tell you that and we even talked about this on the last episode, I think with Garrett Williams and even the one before that, BJ Ojolari, the Cardinals made a very distinct effort to go out and get high character guys. Michael Wilson was a multiple year captain for Stanford. Um, a very, very smart guy. I, I think out of all of the rookies we have talked to so far, whether it be the draft or OTAs, by far the most well-spoken, very, very put together, very intelligent guy. Not surprising when you look at the school he went to, but nonetheless, I think he has the ability to come in and contribute right away. How much that will be, I'm not quite sure. And we just go ahead and jump to the uh, the receiver depth chart now. Obviously, the departure of DeAndre Hopkins opens up doors for more opportunity here in the desert. Marquise one slides into that wide receiver one role, and then you kind of really – Don't know what to expect from there. I know our lads has Greg Dorch listed as the number one slot receiver. I think Rondell Moore actually might occupy that place, and then Greg Dorch might play a little outside. But the top three receivers for Arizona, Marquise Brown, Rondell Moore, Greg Dorch, they're all under six foot. They are all under six foot, and that's not a knock against them. But at some point, you are going to need size. You are going to need a bigger body guy. And that's where a guy like Michael Wilson or even Zach Pascal can come into. Now, obviously, Wilson a little bit more improving river compared to a guy like Pascal, but Pascal doesn't necessarily jump off of the page either. And he's been in the league for a handful of years now. Right. And that is something that's very noteworthy. When you look at that wide receiving core is that Wilson does bring that size factor for you. When you're building a wide receiving core, Donnie there, there's all sorts of different philosophies. You can go into it. Some people want to build a basketball roster and they want big, tall dudes that are six foot two or taller or maybe they want like an all track team and they want guys who are all running sub four threes, right? Typically what you want to do is you want to build a well-rounded wide receiving core. You want that pass guy. You want a big guy. You want a route runner. You want a guy who does a little bit of everything, right? That's typically the best way to approach a wide receiver room is to have a well-balanced attack for the Cardinals. They don't really have that right now. They got a lot of small, fast guys. You look at those top three guys on the depth chart. You look at some of the other guys that they've had in recent years as well. This is this is not a team that has had the most well-rounded court. And Wilson is one of those guys who is an outlier for what they have right now because he he isn't a sub four four runner. He's not a sub four three runner, right? He's he's not a five foot nine. 100 pound wide receiver soaking wet with a blanket on him kind of player. This is a bigger dude. He's, he's a bigger body. He's not the fastest dude in the world, but he can create separation. He's big. He's physical. He's smart. He's a good route runner. He he brings he brings a little more variety to your wide receiver room right now that you truly just are lacking right now. And that's that really does. What am I trying to say? It's worth its weight in gold, essentially is having Michael Wilson on this wide receiver room right now. And that is going to potentially help him stand out a little bit more compared to some of his peers as they're going to look and they're going to see, oh man, well, we're in the red zone. We're inside the five yard line. We can't just, you know, run fades to five foot nine Marquise Brown. We're going to throw six foot two uh, Michael Wilson running fades kind of thing. Like this is, this is a necessity to have those big receivers right now. 
Wilson definitely stands out it, you know, very literally compared to the rest of the guys that he is playing with right now. So it is noteworthy. It is a very, very noteworthy uh, factor to take into account here is that he very, very literally stands apart from his, uh, from his peers on the team right now. Yeah. And I think it's a really good thing because him coming into 2023, even with Hopkins out of the picture now, I feel like there's not going to be a whole lot of pressure for him to produce right away. I, I really want to see him get his feet underneath him at the next level, learn from guys like Marquise Brown and the receiving room. Because right now in my eyes, he's like wide receiver four, wide receiver five on his depth chart. And obviously there's a lot of time for that to change, but um, you know, going the route of establish, establishing uh, yourself on special teams, making sure you are in a spot there while contributing on offense. I, I mean, so many players before him have done that. And I think more than anything, um, that shows that you're willing to put in the work. And I think that shows that you're willing to do whatever it takes for the team to win. And more times than not, those guys end up kind of transcending themselves either on the offense or defensive side of the ball. And if you look at his PFF stats here, um, and just if you want to go over his snap logs, didn't play a whole, whole lot of uh, snaps in the slot. Definitely a boundary receiver with that 6'2 frame. Like I said, nothing really jumps off of the page for me, but I don't want that to be a knock against him. I think I don't want to call him a safe pick. I think there's some good upside to him. I'm not sure if we're talking like dynamic receiver, franchise player. But then again, nobody's expecting that out of him. No, I think what I mentioned earlier is the way that people should be approaching Michael Wilson is this is this is a project player, but this could be an impact special teams player. And right now, this is a Cardinals team that could have an entirely different 53 man roster in four years. Like, will it be? No, but it's that kind of situation that the Cardinals are in right now where nobody's job is safe and they are a rebuilding franchise and they're trying to figure out who can stick on this team, who needs to go. And they're looking for guys who can do anything. They don't, they're not looking for Michael Wilson to be a number one receiver. They're looking for him to be some kind of impact player on the team. And if that is as an impact special teamer, then they'll take it. They'll be very happy. Are right, yeah. Donnie, would you be, would you be willing to say that if Michael Wilson turned into Matthew Slater, that you would be mm -hmm. disappointed? No, you'd be very happy mm -hmm. if you got the next Matthew Slater kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think they took him in the third round to be Matthew Slater, my guy. That's I get it. That's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is if you got that kind of impact, you would take it. Obviously, you take a guy sure. in the third round because you you believe that he can eventually turn into something more. But what we need to understand is that it's going to be a process to get Michael Wilson there. Similar to how the Cardinals are a few year project, Michael Wilson is a few years project. Like the, again, he's but it's 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 a project where years. it's a project where like there's already a good foundation. Like I, he's going to get yes. opportunity this year with, with him being six foot two, um, being like the tallest guy. I think it, yeah, yeah, like it, he's going to get opportunities at some point in the season. Um, and that's not a knock against the other guy's size, but if you're in the red zone, you need a big body receiver to at least put that into thought of of defensive coordinators. You know, you you don't want to limit yourself, but like I said earlier, there's a lot of really good things about Michael Wilson. It's just giving him time to refine his craft, giving him time to get healthy. And then, like you said, establish himself somewhere, whether that's on the offensive end or special team. But with the names ahead of him right now, before we get into mandatory minicamp, before we get into training camp and preseason, he might have to make his impact on special teams. But I think at least down the road, I, there's solid, solid probability that he can turn into a, a decent wide receiver, too. Right, but that's that's exactly it, down the road. And I think the fans need to understand this. So I'm going to make this as clear as I possibly can, and hopefully we can continue to build on this. Michael Wilson is not a day one impact player because he is going to be someone who needs time to develop. He's missed a lot of time, Donnie. This is a very raw prospect who has had that progression stunted. If people are expecting him to be a starting wide receiver in year one. That is unrealistic and that is irresponsible. Can he be? Of course he can, but yeah. you shouldn't expect that. Honestly, I don't think we should have realistic expectations for him as a starting wide receiver until year three, maybe even year four. See, he I would agree because, time. yeah, well, if if you want to project to the future a little bit, Marquise Brown 
his contract's up at the end of the year. Nobody really knows what the Cardinals want to do with him. Um, it kind of looks like Marvin Harrison Jr. is destined to be an Arizona Cardinal. You actually wrote about that, which will be on the website as of Friday. Um, so th- there's a lot of still movable chess pieces along the wide receiver depth chart. And I think that's only going to play into <sighs> Wilson. That's his name. And that's only going to play into Michael Wilson's favor as kind of the, the years go on, because he's going to get that experience. He's going to kind of prove himself to be healthy. And if there's a good base there on top of that high football character, I mean, Jonathan Gannon said it best, like those guys who have that, that high IQ, that, that good character, you don't have to worry about that. Those guys more often than not hit their ceiling. Because you don't have to worry about any of that outside BS. They're focused. They are zeroed in and they are layered. And I think when you watch him at Stanford, he was a damn good receiver. He's a damn good college receiver. And obviously that doesn't always translate to the pros, but you know the foundation is there. Yes, but it's foundation and it's it's going to need time to develop. So I'm gonna continue to say this. This is a project. This is not a this is not a year one. This might not be a year two. It might not even be a year three guy. This could be a dude who takes the entirety of his contract to eventually live up to his potential. Like we truly need to have the utmost amount of grace and understanding that yes, he was a third round pick. But if you want that pick to pay its dividends, then you need to demonstrate patience. This cannot uh, I be think a guy you force they're gonna onto the need, field. They're going to need patience in 2023, regardless of what Michael yes. Wilson looks like. So, yes, and this is for the fans though, who yeah. are going to read all of all of the uh, biggest sleepers, biggest steals of the draft. Like I, I already have people I know who are like, "Dude, Michael Wilson's going to be a monster," and it's like he could be, but if he doesn't do that in his first two years, you can't just write him off as a bust. Yep. This is a guy who's going to need a lot of time, Donnie. He's missed three years of development. This is a project. This is the definition of a project player. Would you call him a high upside project? He was taken in the third round. He he. Whenever he this did depends. play, he did do some really good things. It depends how high you're talking. Do I think this is an all pro player? Who knows? But I do think this is a starting caliber kind of player. But I'll also tell you that this is also a dude who, if the Cardinals don't have the patience and develop him right, could be out of the could be out of the league in four years. Like Ooh. he, it, it's not a Michael Wilson thing. This no, is, no, no, no. This is a this is a an organization needs to understand and take the time and patience and demonstrate that to get him to that point. Because if the Cardinals fail him, I don't I don't know if any other team's going to be willing to pick him up because that could be years wasted. So the Cardinals are going to need to make sure that they give him everything that they possibly can to get him to that next level. It is, it is entirely on them. What happens next short of something catastrophic off the field, which we've never seen anything from Michael Wilson off the field to make us think that something's going to happen. Well, it's a very good thing. He's going to an organization that clearly knows how to develop their players and has never misused a player or let their talent go to waste. At least the Cardinals do have a decent history with wide receivers. That is true. That's, that's the one. And Isabella because what, sir, <laughs> I'm going to point out John Brown for every Andy Isabella. You say, I will say John Brown. That is fair. All right. You have preached the word of patience for Michael Wilson. Third round pick. I believe he's a third round. I'm going to be really dumb and stupid if he wasn't a third round pick, but I think he was. He's the 94th overall pick. Yep. Um, You preach patience about him. Do you have anything else to kind of wrap this conversation up? Um, I don't really think so. I think, I think what you should be looking for as a fan is just to see number number 14 on the football field, whether it's as a receiver on offense or as a gunner on special teams or who knows, maybe they get cute and play him as a returner. I think you just want to see 14 on the football field. Yeah. I don't think you should be counting snaps. I don't think you should be trying to figure out, you know, how many routes did he run, how many times he targeted, whatever. Because if this guy catches two passes by the end of the year or if he catches 20, by the end of the year, as long as the Cardinals are showing the 
the correct attitude to developing him to get him to a point of eventually being a starter, that's what you should look for. For for a little bit of a tease, if you haven't read the article yet, that will be up on uh, Friday, June 2nd. What I said is that projecting a role is basically going to be up to the Cardinals and to Michael Wilson's discretion. Like he could, he could be a starting receiver when you look at this receiving room, right? But he could also be a guy who doesn't start any games or doesn't play any games. Like it's just going to be up to the discretion of how he's feeling uh, in terms of injury recovery and how the team is feeling in terms of how they want to get everybody incorporated. I would assume they want to get as much as they can out of this rookie class. Personally, I think we will probably be seeing a lot of number 14. I'm just telling you it might not be on offense. It might be on special teams. But just whenever you see 14 on the football field, I encourage you to be happy. I could not have said it better myself. I think Michael Wilson does a lot of good things. I think he did a lot of good things at Stanford. Time will tell as to whether or not he can do that at the professional level. But that's why you have the mini camps and the training camp and preseason, all the other good stuff before you throw him to the Wolves. There's a couple of names ahead of him, but I do think he's going to get opportunity at some point to prove his worth. Up next, I think he's John Gaines, if I'm not mistaken. I am not 100% sure. I don't have the uh, the, the very versatile UCLA offensive lineman who might be a sneaky pick to become the team starting center in 2023. We will break that down at a later date. But for now, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the All Cardinals Podcast. Go and follow us on Twitter at Donnie Drew and at Richie Brands 36. Follow our work at allcardinals.com or si.com slash NFL slash Cardinals. Really quick before we close it out, I do want to give our man – a very happy birthday. Shout out Richie Bradshaw. Very happy birthday, my guy. Um, it's an absolute pleasure doing the show with you. Uh, we did this 10 years ago in high school. We we did our own radio show in high school. It's been really, really awesome to see how we've climbed and the things that we've done and the things that we will accomplish. Uh, so excited to see what is going to happen in your future and how you grow as a leader and as a person. Blessed to have you, my brother. I love you. But We're not here to cry. We are here to talk about football. We will do exactly that on the next episode. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you guys soon.